program with students learning during lunch breaks. In 1995, 37% of computer scientists were women. Today, it's only 24%. The percent will continue to decline if we do nothing. We know that the biggest drop from girls in computer science is between the ages of 13 and 17. According to OSU Cascades website, 41% of Oregon high schools offer a foundational computer science course, but only 4% of the state's high schoolers take those classes. Only 2% of those students are female. Every piece of technology you may use on any given day wouldn't function without computer coding. While computer science has made incredible advances over the years, the, the issue of diversity looms. And with that, that was kind of a, uh, you got to bring us up. <laughs> Thank you for having us, and thanks for uh, tuning us to launch here. We appreciate it. Um, I'm actually going to do very little talking. You'd much rather hear from the girls, I think, than, than myself. But I am going to start by uh, bragging about them a little bit. Uh, oh, I got it. What? Different from my class girls. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So uh, the students put this presentation together, not me, so uh, give them all the credit. Um, so anyway, my name is Josh Davis, and I teach computer science, and I'm the Golson Co. Club Advisor at Ridgeview here in Redmond. And so the first thing I wanted to do before I hand it over to the girls is just kind of brag about them a little bit. So, so I'm really fortunate. I get to work with some amazing students, and in Girls Who Code, I really work with some amazing young women. And it really kind of, I have two young daughters, eight and five, and so it's, uh, I hope that they turn out like these two girls and a lot of them uh, when they're older. Um, so just a couple stories real quick about them. So Maya here is a senior. She's our lone senior. Uh, we're mostly freshmen and sophomores, which is good for me for the future. We're not just losing everybody. Um, but four years ago, I was asked to teach computer science, and I kind of ran across the Girls Who Code, which is a national program. And decided, oh, what the heck, we'll, we'll start a club. Um, and so that was kind of, I had a couple students in class uh, who were girls, and then just some other students I'd had previously in math showed up. And then this mysterious freshman, Maya, showed up. I had never known Maya or seen Maya before, um, but it was, so, it was so great to have her. I heard from other teachers that she would get done with her work, and then she would just work on coding because she was so into it. So thankfully, I've had Maya in class. Um, she's an amazing student. Uh, in exploring computer science, then AP last year. She's been a mentor for other students, and now it's, it's kind of sad for me, but I have to say goodbye. She's going to, uh, we'll show to talk about where she's headed and all that. Um, but just to kind of uh, tell you kind of how amazing the students I get to work with are, Maya is one of the four finalists for our um, Epic Raven Award, uh, which is for, we pick one senior in the school, um, and they're voted on by the staff, and so <laughs> Maya is one of four finalists. Did you actually know that, Maya? No, I didn't. So I probably wasn't supposed to say that, um, but but uh, and spill the beans. So uh, that doesn't leave this room. Uh, is that like it stays in Kiwanis? You know, right? Right? It's like it's like it's like Vegas, right? It's like Vegas. Okay, perfect. So we're not going to spread that around. But congratulations, Maya. Um, you got my nomination and vote, of course. So uh, anyway, so that's kind of the caliber of student we we have. Um, then we have Caitlin. Caitlin is an amazing student who's involved in so many things, and that's one thing that these, these girls are just juggling every single thing. So Caitlin's involved in leadership in our school. Um, Caitlin is also a, a star cheerleader for us as well. She's going to do some summer coding classes also. Um, my, one of my favorite stories about Caitlin was this year, uh, Redmond High, uh, the teacher over there who teaches computer science, decided to start a, a Girls Who Code club over there. And so... Uh, I can just announced that to the girls, and Caitlin raises her hand and says, well, I think we really need to support them and help them out, and we can maybe do events together. It was like, wow, you know. So thanks to Caitlin's brilliant idea, not my own at all, I didn't think of that, um, we actually had two <laughs> events with them this year. We, they traveled over to Ridgeview once, we traveled over to Redmond High, and, and really it was so great to just have that collaboration. Uh, as you know, in this town, that rivalry can be healthy, but sometimes maybe not so healthy um, between the two high schools. And so just the fact that Caitlin said, look, I think we should support them and help them kind of get going was just such a 
mature thing to say and just kind of looking beyond those kind of rivalries. So that was amazing. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over <coughs> and sit in the back and watch as well and let them talk. And then if you have questions at the end, we can answer that. But yeah. Don't you run our tech Zoomer program? Too? I do, yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. We just got an amazing track record there with that. Thank you. Aren't you a tech Zoomer? She's a tech Zoomer. Yeah. So, yeah. This is a program that Josh and the kids at come over and they work one on one with seniors who need help with everything from figuring out how to answer the phone, you know, whatever it might be. And really great track record right there. We really appreciate that. Well, thank you very much for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, and as you can see, I mean, I'm kind of the first. When they asked me to, okay, you know, bring some students over for the Tech Zoomer program, Girls Who Code is one of the first places I look because. They, it reflects on the school, and it's so good to hear that. You know, we, I kind of the first line of like, nah, maybe not. You know, I get a couple of kids, hey, I'd like to do this, and it's like, well, but these students, uh, you know, they're very responsible, and they're, they're helpful, and they're always there. So thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. Okay, girls, I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to get out of the way. So they've heard me talk way too much in their time. So, quick thing about Maya, and she's been a veteran since like freshman year, yeah. and she's been carrying the club. Like, people come and go, but she stays thick and thin. So, um, just wanted to give her some props for that. Yeah, so I'm Maya Oaks. Uh, I'm going to graduate high school in two weeks now, which is really crazy to think about. Um, I've been a member since it started, when I was a little freshman. Um, and I'm going to be pursuing a degree in computer science at Southern Oregon University, where I will also be playing on the collegiate golf team. Nice. As she said, she was like, it's so weird to show up here without my club. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and also, I don't, back it up, you didn't say that. You didn't, um, so. Yes. <laughs> I was um, nominated by Mr. Davis for the North, I don't remember what it stands for. Um, National Center for Women in and Technology. Information Technology. Yes. I was awarded the Rising Star Award this past month for um, my aspirations in computing. Congratulations. Okay, so yeah, so I'm Caitlin. And um, so how I joined the club was at first when in freshman year we were just like looking around for clubs. We went to clubs every Wednesday, and at first I was going to do like crochet and knitting, but um, when me and my friends were looking around at clubs, we just kind of walked into this area because um, we were looking around, and it kind of just turned into a thing. We were just like hanging out, and then came into Girls Who Co Club, Girls Who Club, <laughs> Girls Who Code, and. Um, I know I've just stayed ever since, and one of the biggest reasons why I actually stayed in Girls Who Code was because I'm not really big, I wasn't big on coding, and I wasn't familiar with it, and I was willing to expand it on my horizons, and um, I think it's just like, coding is hard, so I needed to get some more um, experience and practice with it, and I'm so glad that I joined Girls Who Code, because I've had so many cool opportunities. And yeah, um, it introduced me to the world of technology. Um, and yeah, this is my second year, because I am a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Girls Who Code is a club for female and non-binary students, and it is, I believe it's international. And it's just to increase the number of women in the computer science field in general because that number has been dropping and we want to increase it back up. You know, 50% of the population is women, so 50% of the workers should also be. And then our, our Ridgeview Girls Who Code Club has been around since spring of 2020. All right, so what do we do? Um, so, yeah, as I said, every Wednesday we come in for lunch and just meet and do coding stuff. Like up there, that's, that's the room that we go into. We eat lunch, and those are micro bits. We use those at the Makeathon um, that just recently passed where we make like projects 
with micro bits and it's um I don't know how to explain the micro bit. We were given like a problem that we, we could pick a problem to solve and we had to code and figure it out. Yeah, we I had was to like build something. I wasn't able to participate because of golf, but <laughs> yeah. Um and so yeah, this was Tech Sewers, as uh, he was saying earlier. And then, oh yeah, that's me with my Tech Sewer from uh, recently, Joanne. She's lovely, she's a sweetheart. Um, and uh, this was the time that we went to go see the Redmond Girls Who Code Club to um, do an AI workshop with them. Yeah, to support them and meet them. And it was really fun. Uh, and then that's Winter Formal, uh, all of our club, or not all of it, um, some, most of our club went there and took a picture because that was our dance, our school dance for the winter. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and then we've been on the news a few times, so we've been on KTVZ, Central Oregon Daily, and Tech Zoomers. So this was a couple years ago. I was an intern at OS, the OSU Cascades Collab, and I got interviewed. So that's me. Um, and then I think we have a news clip. I'll be next. Hopefully the audio works on this. Yeah. Just let Yeah, turn it up all to 100. The award is part of a statewide computer science implementation plan to provide computer science to all students. K-12, <laughs> 30 years ago, I was young. I was starting out in my career, looking around, and being one woman in a sea of men. And I'm hoping 30 years from now, that will completely change. Jill Hubbard is a professor in computer science at OSU Cascades. She has been assigned a recent award of $628,000 from the Oregon Department of Education to be distributed to programs in the state. There'll be an administrator workshop and a counselor workshop, and there'll be an, an elementary um, computing, uh, computational thinking and elementary school workshop. So we're really trying to create some systemic change. The goal is to expand computer science education for Oregon's K-12 students, regardless of ethnicity, gender, or socioeconomic status. Richview High School in Redmond will benefit from the grant money, or there's a girl to code program. I thought it was people sitting in cubicles and coding. And it's really, that's not really it. It's really about how to uh, solve problems, uh, ultimately. There are 16 students in the program with students learning during lunch breaks. I joined because I love like technology and I love to go into the technical field, building or coding or something. I'm not really good at coding, but I'm willing to get better and it's helping me open up to robotics, which is very confusing to me and intimidating. In the coming months, the one and a half million dollars in award money to OSU Cascades will be able to benefit other programs aimed at increasing education in computer science. In the past, there's been a lot of fragmented activity. Around computer science, but not necessarily structured around equity, focused, sustainable, scalable things. So that's what our focus is on. In addition to OSU Cascades, the plan was also developed alongside the University of Oregon and Portland State University. Kelsey McGee, News Channel 21. It's something we rely on every day. I've always kind of found it cool to like put some code into something and then have it come out with like a coherent, amazing little design. Nearly every piece of technology you may use on any given day wouldn't function without computer coding. An emerging issue in the field? Diversity. Traditionally, most computer scientists uh, are white males. And that's just one perspective in the world. And we really would like to expand that. And that's exactly what a $628,000 grant awarded to OSU Cascades aims to do. We have had computer science education in our state for over 50 years, um, but when we took a look at who was actually in the classes, it was a small segment of the student population. According to OSU Cascades website, 41% of Oregon high schools offer a foundational computer science course, but only 4% of the state's high schoolers take those classes. Only 2% of those students are female. I like this controlled by this thing. 
Um, how can I turn it off? What kind of data is, collecting, is it collecting about me right now as I stand there? How is it being used? Uh, so it is important for our, our young people to think about those bigger questions. The money will go toward recruiting, retaining, and training new teachers to teach computer science courses in grade schools throughout the state. Courses similar to the Girls Who Code Club at Ridgeview High School. You can't just have one like demographic of people focusing on the um, women, um, a lot of women are really detail oriented, and I think that's super useful for girls who code, for girls who code and for coding in general. The state will roll out computer science standards, equipping all Oregon public schools with classes in 2027 and 2028. In Redmond, Colby Anagrad, Central Oregon Daily News. Media Center is partnering with the Redmond School District and Facebook parent Meta to launch Tech Zoomers. It's a technology support program to help older adults with tech challenges and training. Meta gave a $3,000 grant to the program. It starts this month and goes through June. Students from Ridgeview High School volunteer to be part of the inaugural program and will be official interns at the Redmond Senior Center. We wanted to provide them with the skills needed to be able to continue growing uh, with our own technological advances. We've had requests for iPhone support, uh, how to you know store photos on their computer, um, how to even you know convert hard photos to digital photos. Some of them want to learn new skills like building a website or coding. Seniors also expressed interest in learning video call systems like Zoom and FaceTime. <coughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> so you hear the word coding. Is, is that a, a big, a small word, word with a lot of definitions, or is there a specific definition we should take away from this? That's a good, thought-provoking <laughs> question. Um, well, I don't have like an actual, like factual answer, but in my opinion, when I think of like the meaning of, of coding. Uh, I'd say it's like kind of more broad because like there's like coding in like ones and zeros and stuff like that and then there's just like simple coding as in like coding a little video game on a simple little website so um, I guess it just depends on what you are coding because there's like different ways to code there's different languages too yeah yeah, so at its core, I mean, basically, coding is the way we communicate with the computer to, so it can do what we want it to do. <laughs> we try that, right? Um, so that's essentially coding, is, is we want, we have something that we want the computer to do for us. Some, some, you know. And so we want to run a program, and so based on ultimately ones and zeros, binary, that's what it is, that's the, the language of computers, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. But that's not, you can't just type in a bunch of ones and zeros as humans. That doesn't really work very well. And so there's different languages um, like Scratch and Python, Java, and several other ones throughout the world that are constantly changing and being added. Uh, and so that's essentially the heart of coding is just how we tell the computer to do what we want it to do. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Could you give us an example of the kind of problems you are given to try to solve with the coding process? Um, are you talking about specifically like the naked phone? Or just, in <laughs> just in general? Like yeah, just problem? in general. If I come in and say, oh, I want to go to the moon, <laughs> and I want you to figure a way to get me there, how do you go about the, whatever the problem is that they give you uh, in some of these competitions or, or your teacher may give you? Yeah, so for like our naked phone project, we could pick which problem we had. So one of them was the customer wanted the lights dim during the daytime and then brighter at night. Or sensing if an animal goes by to turn on the lights. Yeah. Just simple problems like that was what. So. <laughs> simple for them. Simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple like, like, that's simple for them. For, for, for them, it's fairly simple, but perhaps not for me. So I just have a comment. I was talking to my friend up in the Seattle area. He just became officially a software engineer. He said he's making like $114,000 a year for salary. He says, 
could make a lot more money in the Seattle area than he is, but like, sounds like it's decent pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, um, there's no question that there, if, if you're good, you can make quite a bit, well, I tell the kids, you can make more than anyone in this high school, including the principal, <laughs> which is true, if you really are good. There's, there's a lot of opportunity out there for people to make money in this area. I mean, it's, it's growing, it's not going away, I guess is the thing, right? It's, we're, we're only going to become more reliant on computers, not less, uh, for sure. Here in the okay. yeah. you. So, what do you guys think is the reason females or girls or less, or binary students are less likely to get into this world? Or I think just because it's been male dominant for so long, it's hard to change that. And I think, you know, as the world is changing, I'm hoping that more women will be interested in, you know, helping solve the world's problems. Yeah, and um, it's like kind of like, yeah, for like generations, it's like been the norm and like stereotypes how like girls are supposed to be into Barbies and then guys are supposed to be into like cars and stuff like that. But, um, you know, times have changed. Everybody is into anything. And um, yeah, so hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say for me that I'm obviously quite a bit older than they are. Uh, when I was in high school, everyone said, well, you know, boys are good at science and math and girls are good at language arts and social studies. And I taught math for years and nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, I would say out of the top 10 math students I've ever had, eight or nine of them were girls. And so just these, we're trying to fight this stereotype, right? That you know, men have to be this and women have to be this and that's really not it. You know, it's like, you know, and, and that's part of my message to my daughters and to them is you can do whatever you want in this world. And the same thing's true for all of us, right? And we shouldn't allow those barriers to be there. So I just think the fighting against that is, is hard still. We, you know, we, we come up against it in you know, certain ways. Uh, just kudos to you for being involved in cheerleading and golf and this. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty far yes, extreme. I mean, I was all-state football, all-state choir. You know, and, and I, just, I just commend you on that. Second, can you code me something so that I can improve my golf game? <laughs> I buy it. Yeah, I can get behind that. I don't know about that. Okay. I thought I'd throw it out. Do you want to tell about the mini zero thing we did last oh, year? Oh, yeah. Last year, after the AP Computer Science Principles Test, we um, coded little Spiro robots that looked like golf balls and had a mini golf competition. Yeah. <laughs> you can't lower your score. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, uh, I think you just have to go with the old film then. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Oh, guys. It works. It works. It works, it works. for me many times. <laughs> Uh, so you're part of a club. Is there funding that you guys have to do, or fundraising, or is it or do you, anything like for travel or anything? Like yeah. That? No. Guys... Thank you for asking that. We um, we thankfully are really su supported. The reason we're here, and I could get a sub and we get on the bus and everything, was uh, our director of instructional technology. His name is Mike Nye. Is fully supportive of us, and so I don't think he said no to me once. So <laughs> it's just great to have that support. Uh, we don't have. Any club funds or anything? I mean, maybe there's some day where you would need that, but right now, no, it's nice to just, I just say, hey, Mike, you know, you're invited by Kiwanis, you know, and he's like, yep, just tell me what you need. I'm like, okay, I need, you know, half day seven, this and this, and he's like, yep, you got it covered. And so having that has been so, so helpful to grow the club. I mean, I see how much you guys fundraise. I mean, that's incredible. And I used to coach cross country and track, and one of the things that kind of got me out of it was, oh, you just have to start fundraising. I mean, how much time that takes and everything. So, if we had to start doing that, I don't, I, you know, thankfully we don't. I'm um, not saying we wouldn't do it, but it is time consuming. As you guys know, I mean, all the stuff you guys said you did, I was like, holy cow, you're know, getting up early to do the fish thing and all this other stuff. So, yeah, so thankfully right now it's not, that's not an issue. Um, we're really well supported, but, you know, who knows? We also know that, you know, funds are starting to dry up, as you probably know, like the COVID money, and you probably, you know, Ben's didn't get their thing passed, it looks like, for that, and so. Hopefully we don't get to that point, but so far it's been really nice. So, yeah, thanks for asking that. Yes. Thanks for all the questions. Too. I remember in the uh, mid '90s, I was working for a search engine company, and we had about 50 programmers. Of all those programmers, only one was a woman. So I guess you guys have come a long way. Yeah. Uh, we know there's very few girls involved in this computer, but how about generally 
people who come into the computer program, one of the concerns that uh, I've heard expressed is that not enough kids, regardless of sexual orientation, yeah. not enough kids are getting into the that kind of field. What is your experience? Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely true. I mean, we just now, this is our fourth year of having a computer science program at Ridgeview. Uh, as I said, only 41% of schools in the state have an introductory course. Uh, so, and unfortunately, one of the first things to go when you have budget cuts and things like that is, is those elective classes. Uh, so I was part of the committee for the state that in 20, was pushed back because of COVID and other things was supposed to come out in 21, 22. We were supposed to have statewide standards. It got bumped to 24, 25. But you heard in there, it's really supposed to come out in 27, 28. And so Oregon actually is, I think, the last state to actually adopt uh, computer science standards. So it hasn't been part of what we've taught in school um, until now. I mean, at least I heard that. It's, if not, I think I did hear it was the last. It may just be one of the last ones. Um, so that's part of it. And so when you don't, you know, when you put all the time and energy, math, math and language arts, which are all things students need to learn, you know, but then the first thing to go is these other programs. That's really hard. The other part, the other issue with computer science is just recruiting teachers. Um, I have not yet met a um, teacher uh, of computer science who has a computer science degree. And it's really for the reason the gentleman in the back said, if I had a computer science degree, I'd be off making $200,000 a year, right? I mean, that's what you do. So what they tend to do is recruit people like me that from math and science, get them trained to teach computer science at least a little bit, um, and that's kind of how that works. That's hard too because you get you know you just can't get people to actually teach it. Question here and here, or was that a follow up by either? Yeah. Uh, the 27, 28 standards you're talking about is that when all of the standards will kind of come into play in Oregon again, is that kind of all tied in together? It's not tied in together. This is specifically computer science state standards, so I believe it's the freshmen in that year that, and, and they're still trying to work on it, right? Like we, we, we have this implementation plan saying in that year that's when we would have it. So, but it's not part of like a full rollout of other standards as well. But they're constant, the state ODE is always looking at those things. Yeah, I was just going to ask, how how is AI going to affect coding? Oh, or do coders have to create AI? Huh? We, we probably need to come back for a whole other session, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Uh, AI, I, as a teacher, I've seen how cell phones and social media have changed uh, our world, and AI is the next next big one. It's huge. It is. Okay. I, can't, I can't even begin. To, it is, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes. I, mean, they, they actually yes. I would like to say, though, that um, AI definitely makes it easier, especially generative AI. Have you guys heard of chat GPT? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, it's just like for that, for generative AI, it can help like generate codes or give you at least um, examples and help you get into coding. So it doesn't just do everything for you, and you don't have to generate that AI or like make that AI. Um, so it's just like kind of um, either or you could either code AI yourself or use it to help you code. <laughs> yeah. Well great. Guys, thank you so much for coming. We have a little token for you. to exert their power and bring their diversity of thought and innovation to making a difference in this world. Thank you for being in that world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.